into a harness, Nicole Roberts climbs the side of a rocky cliff. She reaches up to grab a small ledge. That's good, Nicole, but could you try making it uh, a little more dramatic? Sure, boss. How's this? Very nice. Jonah Very videotapes nice, from uh, above. Could you furl your brow a bit more or something? You don't look intense enough. Give me a break, Jonah. Well, you don't want it to look too easy. Do you want to trade places? No, it's okay. What's that? Jonah records a white light streaking across the sky. Dr. Grant Roberts drives an open Vancouver Aquarium Jeep across a bridge into the city. Grant leaps from a harbor air chopper onto the deck of a boat. Danger Bay. Grant pilots a Vancouver Aquarium motor cruiser across the bay. Starring Donnelly Rhodes as Grant Doc Roberts. Susan Walden as J.L. Duval. J.L. pilots a harbor air chopper as it takes off. At the aquarium, a killer whale jumps high out of a pool. Also starring Christopher Crabbe as Jonah Roberts. And Ocean Hellman as Nicole Roberts. Grant pilots a diving chamber. And starring Hagen Begg says Dr. George Dunbar. The kids spray Grant with water and he smiles as he hugs them both. Catch a falling star. Guest stars Marushka Stankova. And Anthony Sherwood. Written by Glenn Norman. Directed by Alan Simmons. In the Robert's kitchen, after frosting a cake, Grant shows it to JL. There. A work of art. Oh, a masterpiece. Mm. Hey. JL fingers some frosting. It had to be a meteor. If it was a satellite, Whoa. I'm sure we would have been warned. Oh, hi. Just in time. Well, I thought you could only see meteors at night. How did the climb go? No, if they're big enough, you can see them any time. What are you two talking about? The meteor, or whatever it was. Where? You guys didn't see it, huh? Mm -mm. No. Well... You will now. Jonah's got it all on tape. Oh, great. Let's go take a look at it. Yeah. I'm going to give Dr. Ivanova a call at the observatory. She gave a lecture last semester on astronomy. She might want to see it, too. The others have left. i got to stop talking to myself. Later, the video plays. It's amazing. Your tape changes everything. That's great. Thanks, Jonah. Dr. Ivanova, do you think the meteorite survived the passage through the Earth's atmosphere? Oh, yes, quite sure. From Jonah's tape, we can see that the fireball dropped below the horizon behind the mountain. We should show the media this tape. Oh, please don't. Why not? Am I the only one you have shown this to? <laughs> yeah. Why the secrecy? Because some meteorites are worth their weight in gold, literally. And you could be sure there will be people looking for this stone who could care less about science. Jonah nods, considering this. Later, a helicopter flies over a forest. The pilot consults a map. He scans around the rapids below. Meanwhile, atop a cliff... He disappeared over there, behind that mountain. Dr. Maria Ivanova checks her compass. 335 degrees. Now we can finish our calculations. Good. Now, what will this meteorite look like? I don't know for sure. Map in hand, she picks up a large rock. Most meteorites look like this rock. Maybe bigger, maybe smaller. They don't look too exciting, but they are one of the few things that tell us about other worlds beyond this planet. That's pretty exciting. I think so. She hands the rock to Jonah, and he tosses it hand to hand. That night on the Roberts porch... See here, Dad? This is where Nicole and I were when we saw it. These are the sightings that Dr. Ivanova got from different eyewitnesses. So you think the meteorite is somewhere in there? That's right. Uh -huh. There's a three-mile area on the eastern slope. Oh, well, that's good. How did it go? Did you get the go-ahead? Maria joins them. You are so lucky to have a night sky like this. Most people in the city never see more than a handful of stars. Yeah, I guess we shouldn't take it for granted. I'd love to visit your observatory someday. Take a look through your telescope. You would be very welcome. But you'd better do it soon. We are closing down next month. Why? 
A shopping mall is being opened less than a mile away from us. Unfortunately, a mall means lights, and lights destroy the night sky. So, the day they open, our observatory will become unusable. Been a leader in astronomical research for over a hundred years. That's why I wanted to find that meteorite. JL enters with a tray of tea. Nicole follows. It would have been a last great achievement. You mean they're not going to fund the search? They don't see the point. We know where it is. You don't understand, Jonah. There are no spare funds for a wild goose chase. JL studies the map. Is this where you'll be searching? Maria looks at the map with JL. Yes. I have to fly an executive in from a mining camp tomorrow. I could drop you off there on my way out. It would be wonderful. An awful lot of ground to cover on your own. You'd have to stay overnight. I can't pick you up until the next That's day. That's fine. I'd love to help you, Dr. Ivanova, but I have to work tomorrow. I have a few days off. I can give you a hand. Thanks, Joan. Thanks. The next day, JL flies Jonah and Maria in the harbor air chopper. Looks like there's a clearing down there. I'll put her down. Uh oh. Looks like somebody else had the same idea. As they descend, they notice another chopper and a man who has set up camp in the clearing. The man steps forward and watches as the chopper touches down. It lands on a rocky clearing. Jonah emerges from the back of the chopper and heads around to the other side. As he opens the baggage compartment, Maria gets out of the cockpit, securing the door behind her. When she goes to help Jonah, she notices the man who gazes back at her intently. JL lifts off straight up into the air. The man steps over to greet Maria and Jonah. Maria, it's been a long time. Richard Granger. Dr. Granger is a professional meteorite hunter. Congratulations, Maria. You uh, found the fall area very quickly. Dr. Granger used to be one of the world's leading specialists in meteorites. I nearly starved to death as well. Dr. Granger's discovered that private collectors will pay quite a lot of money for meteorites. I search out rare stones and make them available to people who value them. Perfectly legal, Maria. Richard, you have betrayed everything you once believed in. She glares at him. I'm sorry you feel that way. They turn to walk away from each other. Feel free to share the campsite if it won't offend your moral sensibilities too much. Maria sighs. We came here to search. Let's search, even if he does have a helicopter. Our information's more accurate. I knew there was a reason why I brought you along. Jonah smiles. At the aquarium, Grant is in the lab. George. You called? Yeah. Listen, do you know anything about light pollution? Why, do we have a problem? No, a friend of mine does. When the uh, zoo first opened, we had animals attacking each other, uh, not eating, and some of them got quite sick. Sounds like they were just having trouble adjusting to their new surroundings. Ah, uh, it was more than that. Uh, it was the trees that finally clued us in. The trees? We had them draped with fancy lights. The constant glare made them bloom out of season. Yeah, it also threw the animals' sleeping patterns out of whack, so they got sick. That's easy to fix. Right. Turn off the lights. He flicks the lights off and on. Unfortunately, that won't help the observatory. The Atwood Observatory? Yeah, you heard about their problem? Privately funded, no political savvy? I heard they sent a letter to the new mall owners demanding all lights off at sunset. Not a very good way to make friends, but what else could they do? Well, tell them to call Fred Boyd, our lighting consultant. Since the zoo problem, we don't change a light bulb around here without asking him first. Okay, thanks, George. Yeah. Management 101. Solve problems. <laughs> Dunbar gives Grant a business card and then exits. Meanwhile, Jonah and Maria hike through the woods in search of the meteorite.
This is a lot like searching for a needle in a haystack. I don't understand why we haven't seen any broken trees. Some sign of the meteor's pathway. Yeah, well, we will. And at least we have the edge on Granger. He doesn't know to search on the eastern slope. Ha! You are right. Let's search for another hour. They continue onward. Meanwhile, Richard flies his chopper over the woods. Peering out at the treetops, he consults his map. Later, Jonah and Maria return to the campsite. Jonah flings off his backpack as he approaches Richard, who's holding a coffee pot and a mug. You two covered a lot of ground today. We did all right. It's uh, interesting that you concentrated so much on the eastern slope of the valley. My information puts the fall more to the west. You are not doubting your own information, are you, Richard? Not really. But uh, I think I'll check the eastern slope from the air tomorrow. Look, there are meteorites all over this planet. The Antarctic ice fields are littered with them. Your collectors don't care where they came from. Why can't you leave this one alone? Boy, you really want me to stay away from that eastern slope, don't you, Maria? Why is that? You know, there is no way you could pinpoint the fall that accurately. Not unless you film it. Maria lowers her gaze while Jonah sips coffee and looks away. Well, I'll be darned. You did. <laughs> Congratulations. Look, I'm willing to make a deal. Richard, we are not interested in making... You got the fall site, I got the helicopter. We could join forces. Whatever we get for the stone, we'll split 50-50. The stone is ours. Well, then you better get there first. Oh, and uh, one thing, Marie. If your fall site is so accurate, how come you haven't found it yet? Richard smirks, then turns away. Uncrossing her arms, Maria defiantly steps over to her tent, grabs her knapsack, and pulls out her notes to study them. In his tent, Richard studies his notes, too. He glances over at Maria competitively. Meanwhile, Grant's on the phone. That's very helpful. Thanks a lot. Any light been shed on the situation? I hope not. It all depends on whether the mall's lighting contracts are finalized. If not, the lighting consultant is working on something that may give everybody what they want. Well, there's a few fences have to be mended first. Nobody likes to be told how to run their business. You're right, but suppose the observatory finds the meteorite they were looking for. That would create a lot of excitement, wouldn't it? Absolutely. Everybody's been talking about it. And suppose the mall could announce to the world they'd solve the lighting problem and save the observatory. They'd cash in on a lot of free publicity, wouldn't they? What do you think? I'm getting worried about you, Grant. Why? Dunbar taps his head. You're starting to think like me. <laughs> Thank you. They exit the aquarium, turning off the lights behind them. The next morning... Richard emerges from his tent, fully dressed. Gazing up at the sky, he puts on his jacket, then walks across the campsite. He steps past Maria's tent and peers into Jonah's. He then kneels beside Maria's tent. Certain that Jonah and Maria are sleeping, Richard searches Maria's backpack. finds her notes, replaces the backpack, and takes them. Richard sits outside his tent, reviewing Maria's notes. Jonah emerges from his tent and approaches Maria. Good morning. Maria frantically searches her backpack. So where are my papers? What's going on? Shh. 
Sorry, I forgot to return these. Richard flings notes at Maria. You stole them. What do you mean? I just gave them back. Chona glares at Richard. I don't believe you. All spare in love and meteorite hunting. Besides, you would have never found it anyway. What do you mean? You made a small error in your calculations, Maria. He walks away. Wait. Hey. What'd we do wrong? Absolutely nothing. If the Earth was flat. Richard heads to his chopper, and Jonah returns to Maria. What did he mean, if the Earth was flat? Oh, no. How could I? I forgot the curvature of the Earth. She crumples the notes. What are you doing? You know, I thought that he might try something like this. So I wrote up fake calculations and left them where he could get his hands on them. She grabs notes from the tent. These are the real figures. So Dr. Granger doesn't really know where the meteor is. Joan appears up at Richard's helicopter. But we do. Richard was right. I plotted the fall for a flat surface. Instead of correcting for the fact that the Earth is round, the meteorite fell around the air and landed about eight miles further away in the next valley. That would be a pretty far hike. About four or five hours. I guess we don't have any other choice. Maria looks up and sees JL's chopper approaching. They rush to greet the chopper. We might make it yet! Good time, JL. JL gently lowers the harbor air chopper to the rocky landscape. Meanwhile, Richard flies his chopper over a dense forest in search of the meteorite. In JL's chopper, Maria reviews a map with Grant. So this is where Granger's looking? And the real fall site is over here? Four miles away, but we can still get to that meteorite first. Well, if we do, we could save the observatory. What do you mean? I talked to the mall manager last night. Tie into the publicity when you find the stone. He's willing to make a compromise. What is he going to do? Turn off the lights? <laughs> no, but he would consider changing to low pressure sodium lighting. How would that help? Our lighting consultant tells me that that kind of light can be screened from a telescope by using a simple filter. Grant, you have no idea what this means to me. Well, don't thank me yet. Still have to find the stone. Richard flies past the Harbor Air Chopper and then turns to follow it. Can you lose him? JL grins. Hang on. As JL picks up speed, Richard follows in hot pursuit. JL veers to the right and Richard sticks to her. JL swoops low, steadily maneuvering a path over a stream. Richard races his chopper, sticking to her tail. Approaching a fork in the rocky stream bed, JL veers to the right. She veers away from the stream and arcs upward. Richard follows close behind. The two helicopters fly over the treetops. JL focused on trying to lose Richard. She zooms over a mountain. Then she swoops down through a valley, carefully navigating the rocky terrain as Richard follows closely.
swerves to the right and flies close to the ground through a sun-laden mist, causing Richard to lose sight of the harbor air chopper. Clearing the mist, he speeds onward in search of JL, whose chopper hangs still, suspended in the air several feet beneath him. Maria is happily relieved as the chopper flies off in the other direction to resume its mission. Meanwhile, Richard reviews his map and turns his chopper around. Nice try, Maria. Soon after, the harbor air chopper flies over a long path of fallen trees. That must be it. It sure is. JL slowly lowers the chopper onto a flat, stony landing strip. Shortly after, Jonah, Maria, and the others fan out through the woods. spots a broken tree over here the others follow him as he continues hiking they walk past a series of trees with broken limbs reaching the clearing they find Richard casually sitting on the meteorite reading hello everybody well we can close is there anything we can do here dr. Granger that meteorite could mean the survival of the observatory. I'm sorry, that has nothing to do with me. Earlier, you offered to split the stone. Would you reconsider? I offered to split the money. There's no way you could split a stone like this without destroying it. A meteorite this big has to be made of solid iron. See for yourself. Richard hits the meteorite with a rock and is shocked when a large piece breaks off. Marie and Richard examine the stone closely. It's carbonaceous chondrite. A Genesis stone. They share a knowing glance, and Richard runs his hand over the stone. This meteorite is a sample of the original material our solar system is made of. It's a piece of creation. There have been fragments found before, but never a complete stone. Maria takes the broken piece of stone and lays it on top of the other. Congratulations, Richard. You are a rich man. I don't know, Maria. The stone is too valuable to science. Why don't you take it? But it's your find. Why don't you two share the discovery? After all, in a weird way, it was a cooperative effort. I like it. What do you say? Partners. Richard grins and Maria shakes his hand. Executive producer Paul Saltzman. Supervising producer Harold Tickenor. Post-production producer Paul Quickly. Executive story consultant Anne McNaughton. Supervising editor Stephen Lawrence. Production manager Gordon Mark. Story editor Donaline Saul. Editor Pia DiCella. Music by Don Gillis. Executives in charge of production, CBC, Deborah Bernstein, the Disney Channel, Victoria Fraser. Special thanks to Vancouver Public Aquarium, Corporation of the District of North Vancouver, British Pacific Properties. Produced by Danger Bay Productions Incorporated. Copyright 1988.